ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks and this is The Leader. We are approaching one of the biggest decisions this country will face in our lifetimes. Whether to remain in a reformed European Union or to leave. The total number of votes cast in favour of leave was 17 million. 410,742. The European Council decided to grant the United Kingdom a flexible extension. You know full well that my view is that the best uh, route for the UK is to leave the European Union with a good deal. I believe we negotiated a good deal. Sadly, Parliament did not uh, take that view and did not come to a majority. It will be up to whoever my successor is to find a way through that. Just as we used our new freedoms to accelerate the vaccine rollout, we're going to use Brexit freedoms to do things differently. We, we've done that. We're doing the Borders Bill. We, we've seen off the European Super League and protected grassroots football. Just under 10 years since the EU referendum was promised by the government, It appears that Brexit is still not completely done. A key element of negotiations with the EU, how trade and other things work in Northern Ireland, has remained a contentious issue ever since. Be in no doubt, we are the government of the United Kingdom. I cannot see any circumstances whatever in which there would be any need for checks on goods going from uh, Northern Ireland to, to GB. January 2020, the then Prime Minister Boris Johnson discusses his planned Northern Ireland protocol to deal with trade into and out of the region following Brexit. Fast forward 12 months though and the protocol is agreed with new checks and processes on trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Two Prime Ministers and a whole load of political events later, yet another new deal to ameliorate the trade situation has been agreed between Rishi Sunak and President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. This new framework will allow us to begin a new chapter. It provides for long-lasting solutions that both of us are confident will work for all people and businesses in Northern Ireland. Today's agreement delivers smooth-flowing trade within the whole United Kingdom, protects Northern Ireland's place in our union, and safeguards sovereignty for the people of Northern Ireland. The Windsor Framework sets out new rules for trade, tax and sovereignty in Northern Ireland and it's hoped it will end the row over post-Brexit arrangements in the region. But how is this new deal different from the old one and how significant could this be for Rishi Sunak's reputation? Joining me now is the Evening Standard's political editor Nicholas Cecil. So Nick, first of all, can you just give us some background to this new latest Brexit deal for Northern Ireland? Well, certainly, if you look back six months, a year, two years, three years, um, relations between the EU and the British government have been very fraught ever since the Brexit referendum. Over the Northern Ireland trade arrangements, things have been extremely fraught. The government was threatening to push through a Northern Ireland protocol bill, basically to unilaterally change the trading relationship between Britain and Northern Ireland without giving Brussels any say. So this was very, very controversial, could have triggered a a full-blown trade war between the UK and the EU. And the the, the language that was used during Boris Johnson years as PM and when Liz Truss was briefly in number 10, it was always quite confrontational. Now, Rishi Sunak has come in and he's taken a very different approach. Yesterday, we've got this agreement that the Windsor framework, and a lot of that has been put down to better relations between the key players in Brussels and in the UK government. And when you look on the government website at the Windsor framework, there is a lot of detail. Can you run us through the sort of key tangible changes that make up this new framework? I think if we if we look at three core elements. So first of all, goods travelling from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. So previously, under the protocol, there was all sorts of checks and bureaucracy, which meant many suppliers simply weren't bothering to send goods to Northern Ireland because it was just too much hassle and hardly worth doing trade across the Irish Sea like that. So now here we've got a new system where we have a green lane And that is for goods going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, but staying in Northern Ireland. And then you've got a red lane 
for goods which are going to Northern Ireland, but then going on into the Irish Republic, i.e. into the EU. So that hugely simplifies trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Then you've got the matter of taxation. That's been far more simplified. So, for example, UK rules on VAT and it will now apply properly in Northern Ireland. And then there's something called the democratic deficit. So if there are EU laws which have been amended or changed, in future now, there'll be something called the break, the Stormont break. So if 30 members of Stormont, it doesn't have to be cross-community, but there had to be 30 from two parties, if they believe that whatever change is happening would have a significant and lasting impact on the people of Northern Ireland, then they, they can basically pull this break. So what that means is they pull the break, then it goes to the UK government, which is able to stop this new law or amended law coming in. The UK government will try to thrash out a solution with Brussels to get some agreement on it. If not, basically, the UK government can veto it. Brussels can still retaliate then and impose proportionate measures, uh, restrictions on single market access in Northern Ireland. So it does have still some power. They really never want to get to, to these, these late confrontational stages. Uh, and what they've shown is that by talking, rather than taking bellicose antagonistic positions, actually a lot of these issues can be resolved. And like we've seen, Nick, with the Northern Ireland Protocol, can you see this new Windsor framework actually being superseded by another new deal in future? Or do you think it'll actually sort of settle it down? Well, the, the government haven't ruled out making some changes to it, but it, it's very much a deal that's been done. It was been worked on into the very early hours of Monday morning. So people have been speculating that a deal had, had long been done and clearly the main bits of it had. But some of the details would be still being thrashed out just hours before Rishi Sunak met Ursula von der Leyen in Windsor on Monday. The broad thrust of it is like to stay the same, although if the DUP or another party comes up with some suggestion which might improve it, then I don't think kind of minds are closed to that. Let's take a break now. In part two, Nick explains how this new deal could impact Rishi Sunak's reputation and our relationship with the USA. So if that is resolved, it opens up the possibility of talks of a trade deal between the UK and the US. So Nick, obviously today, Rishi Sunak has been in Northern Ireland to try to sell this deal to the DUP. How do you think that will have gone? Well, certainly it's going to be a hard sell. And at the moment, there are mixed signals coming from the DUP. So quite swiftly after the deal was unveiled, we had Ian Paisley, one of their MPs, saying that the problem with the handbrake is that you can't find it. It's so deeply buried underneath the spare tyre. And uh, you've got Sammy Wilson, again, at one of the DUP hardliners, their chief whip and Brexit spokesperson. He was highly critical of it. Interestingly, this morning, the DUP leader, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, who's been stressing that his party will take its time, examine this document, a lot of pages to get through. But certainly he raised hope that the DUP may not dismiss it outright because he was accepting that the Stormont break actually was a break. Uh, So certainly he sees that that may work in, in some shape or form. And do you think this new deal will trigger Stormont to get back to politics and get back to power sharing? I think that's obviously the aim, because without the Assembly being back up and running, the Stormont rate doesn't work, because it, you need at least 30 members of the, of the Assembly to trigger it. But um, even if it doesn't get the, the Assembly back immediately, I think the hope is if you push it through, and then eventually the power sharing will be restored. And if this deal does get approved and agreed to by all sides, Nick... What will it do for Rishi Sunak's reputation as our PM, both in the UK, but also abroad? I think it could be very significant, this. Certainly, looking abroad, certainly it completely resets relations with the European Union. They've been very fraught and almost unpleasant at times. But Rishi Sunak has come and he's taking a far more pragmatic, far more uh, collegiate approach than his predecessors. And it seems to have paid dividends. And not only could it boost uh, relations with countries on the continent, it could also 
boost ties with America. Joe Biden has had serious concerns about tensions rising between Britain and the EU over Northern Ireland. Um, so if that is resolved, um, it, it opens up the possibility of, of talks of a trade deal between the, the UK and, and the US. The other thing this, this shows is that Mrs Sunak's detailed thorough approach to government is going to likely to win over far more MPs if he's shown to finally deliver Brexit rather than uh, it dragging on as an ongoing sore in politics. Obviously, Brexit is, is still overall damaging to the UK economy, and it's led to other downsides like Britain now having worse air pollution rules than, than currently planned on the continent. So um, while um, a deal may have been struck on Northern Ireland trade, that the downsides of Brexit are still there and very evident for most people to see who, who look at it with open eyes. There's more news, interviews and analysis in the Evening Standard newspaper and, of course, at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. Thanks for listening. We're back tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock.